It's so beautiful. A big old fish down there swimming around with that trap in her mouth. Oh, I just love that. Come right off the edge of that buck brush. There's a little patch of grass right there. Let's see right up there. So. Now, interestingly, you guys know I'm a six cents guy, but I'm actually throwing a rattle trap right now. And the reason I'm doing that is. Uh, six cents baits dig a little more they go a little bit deeper which is I'm, I'm throwing them too but when I get back in this real shallow stuff a lot of times I'll pick up that Bill Lewis goodness that fish is so good I'll pick up that Bill Lewis trap keep that bait a little higher in the water column look at the belly on that fish pretty fish Pretty fish. A real lethargic bite. But the water this morning, so it didn't get as cold last night, the water this morning is 57 degrees already. We've got a full moon coming up here in just a couple of weeks. These fish are going to get real shallow. Guys, this is probably the perfect opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, my experience this time of year on Raver. And, and my experience is uh, there's, a re there's two bite windows. There's a really early bite window, and that bite window is usually until the sun hits the water. Now, yesterday we were boat 199, uh, and actually I was okay. This time of year I'm very okay usually getting a late boat draw because the, the fishing usually is better late up in the day. So uh, yesterday morning you saw us. Well, you didn't see us because there's no footage. We ran back to those deep dragon football jig fish that we fished, River and I fished in the Sweet 16 the week before, but we were boat 199 yesterday. So by the time we got up here, it was an hour and a half before, after we had already caught those fish the week before. I kind of knew that, but it's an area that historically I've caught some giants off of, and all I was trying to do yesterday morning was catch a giant. I'm not trying to catch a limit, because I know I can catch a limit up in the day. The second significant bite window starts about lunchtime or a little bit after. Now, by the way, I'm talking specifically on sunny days. When that sun gets up, starts warming that water, black bass are cold water or cold uh, cold blooded. So they'll get up on top of that grass, or if you're not around glass, they love getting up on those little shallow clay points, and they'll sun up there and they'll feed up there. Now, I suspect the bait fish are up there too for the same reason, but. So in my mind, I knew we could catch some fish late in the day, and I felt like we're getting close enough to this moon that there was going to be some big fish out, and there were. I just didn't execute. We didn't execute. Uh, but in my mind, what I wanted to do was try to catch a great big one in the morning, and then in that midday period, so I'm going to say from 8.15 till about noon, we're just trying to get a reaction bite. Those fish don't tend to feed really good during that period. And we're going to do that generally one of two or three ways. We're going to do it with a chap or a chatterbait over the top of the grass. That's a straight re or square bill. That's a square. That's a straight reaction bite. Now I'll also tell you, I love doing it with a jerk bait that provoke 106. But my elbows hurt so bad, you're hardly going to see me fishing the jerk bait anymore. They just it just kills me from playing tennis all the way through college. My elbows hurt so. And then the other thing is is deeper is mid to deep range craking. And I, that's why I love that Six Cents Cloud Series. I got 10, 15, 20s, and 25s. And this time of year, I'm really going to focus from about 8 to about 15 or 18 feet deep cranking. And again, I'm just trying to get a reaction bite. Now, don't get me wrong if you watch what Daryl did the other day in the uh, FLW. If you fire a school of those fish up, great. You can catch them real quick and usually fire them up with a crankbait and throw back in there with a, and drag something or throw back in there with a, 
a hybrid jig and get some bites. But I'm just trying to get a reaction bite until that late feed period when those fish get up on top of that grass. And once those fish get up on top of that grass, I know I can go through there. And again, I'm gonna go back to a rattle bait, uh, a chatter bait or a swim jig, or I'll tell you something else that, that is so funny. You don't hear a lot of guys talk about, but it still gets thrown a ton down here. It's a doggone spinner bait. Guys still throw spinner baits and catch great big ones down here. A buddy of mine caught a great big one the other day. Uh, just slow rolling a spinnerbait over the top of that grass. It's the same thing we're done with A-Rigs, but we may have conditioned these fish a little bit to A-Rigs down here over the last year because the bite's really not been that good recently. Now, I caught a couple on it yesterday, but it's nothing like it was a year ago right now. Now, that's going to change dramatically when the shad spawn happens. You'll, I'll be wearing y'all out with that A-Rig again on the shad spawn. But that's kind of my thought process right now. And I'm going to share one more thing with you. So you see I'm fishing up into a drain here. And my experience is there's going to be more fish on that side of this drain than this side. And that is purely sunshine related. Those fish, and I think those bait fish as well, are going to be on the sunny side of these pockets because that's the warmer side. That fish was there. We came through here yesterday and caught two. Both of them were over there. We fished in that side and out that side. Caught them on that side, no bites on that side probably shouldn't even fish that side anymore. I'm not saying you're not gonna catch a random fish over there, but I think you stand way better chances running six drains on the sunny side than three drains on the sunny and the shady side. That's just my thoughts on that. So that's a little bit about what I think's going on usually until the full moon in February. Now it's a real early full moon this year, if it's a later full moon in February on Rayburn, a lot of times that's full up uh, of spawn. I suspect the big wave this year, even though we've had a really mild winter and the water right here is 55 degrees, I suspect the big wave will be on that early, early March moon this year and probably a little bit if we stay warm on the dark moon in late February. Now, cloudy days, whole different animal. Cloudy days here especially those super cold cloudy days can be really, really tough. Um, I struggle more here on cloudy days than I do sunny days. And I just, it's one of those deals where you just gotta go fishing and let the fish tell you what to do. Color wise this time of year, on sunny days I pretty much, now I'm talking specifically to rattle baits now, I pretty much stick to chromes and, and Clayton Shiner, which is a bleeding shiner. That's pretty much my deal this time of year, or bleeding shiner if you're throwing a Bill Lewis bait or some other bait. Now, I will always mix up, mix in orange and red, because there's just days they get on those colors and they just beat anything else you throw. Uh, but to me, that's the two colors on sunny days. On partly cloudy days, I almost strictly stick to gold and reds. And then on cloudy days, I stay gold and reds, but I also lean really hard on gold. Uh, I, or excuse me, I said, uh, so orange and red and then gold. By the way, we've got a bait coming out this year. I'm not going to tell you all what it is yet, but it's a bait that I've always wanted to have this color, and I reached out to Six Sense, and they love the bait color, and they also love what we're going to call it, so I'll share that with you all pretty soon. It's actually, unfortunately, only not going to get out until May. We have, the, we have the prototypes in, but... It, we won't be able to release it till May, so I think you're gonna find that fun. So. Um, so on cloudy days, I will try everything. I'll go out and I'll drag, I'll throw a football jig, I'll throw a crankbait, try to get a reaction bite, I'll throw a, I'll throw a rattle bait, I'll throw a spinner bait, and then once I figure them out, now usually on a cloudy day, if you figure them out, you can catch them, but my best moving bait bites on Rayburn all the way till the spawn have always been on sunny days. My most fun, biggest stringer ever on Rayburn with a moving bait was a late late February. Uh, it was about 25 degrees. The wind was blowing out of the northeast, and I was on my way back to Dallas. I had stayed at Dickie's house, and I just wanted to get up and go fishing. I put in at 9 that morning, and those big females, anywhere there was slack water, that wind bottom blowing across, those big females were on top of that grass. And I had uh, a fish over eight, a fish over nine, a ginormous fish that pulled off under the boat. I was trying to not let a guy see. And then like three or four or five, five to six pound fish. It was just a crazy day. 
and it was a day that normally you wouldn't even want to be on the water. But it was sunny, and those big fish got on top of that grass. They had moved shallow to spawn. They weren't quite to the spawn yet, and they were just up there sunning and munching on anything that went by. So I'm going to fish around in here a little bit more. Uh, this is Sunday, so yesterday it was the outlaw. I've already got that video posted. And uh, I'm going to just poke around in here see if I can get a few more bites. It, i got to tell you, if I was here this afternoon, I'd flip these bushes. Uh, Moon Pie and I talked about it in here yesterday, and uh, we didn't do it because we hadn't done it in practice. <coughs> it probably needs another foot of water in these bushes to really be good, but it just feels like you can catch them in these bushes right now. So, ah, I love this time. Let's go fish, guys. Tiny patch of millfall right in that little corner right there, and I've caught several fish out of it. I was about to get a hook in the hand on that one, boys and girls. You know, that's funny. Kevin Van Dam grabs them like that, and they never wiggle. Ken Smith grabs them like that, and they go kicking. Sorry about that, buddy. I didn't mean to drop you. Have a lot of fun, buddy. Keep growing and getting bigger. Ah, that's 